That's right. Welcome to the next reading from the, the book uh, Our Radiant Redeemer by Tim Chester. <clears throat> Friday's reading where we start with Luke chapter 9 verse 30 where it says two men Moses and Elijah appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus I that is the author once went with a friend to watch England play India at cricket we arrived early and saw Joe Root, the England player, one of my cricketing heroes, the author's cricketing heroes, warming up on the outfield. Go and talk to him, my friend urged. I declined. What was I going to say? Hello, you're Joe Root. <clears throat> if you were to meet your hero, what would you say? On the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah get to meet not just their hero, but their Lord and God. What do they say? Luke tells us, two men, Moses and Elijah, he writes, appeared in glorious splendour talking with Jesus. That's verse 30. Then Luke adds in verse 31, they spoke about his departure. It's literally his exodus. It's an allusion to the story of the exodus, when God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt. But it's also another reference to Isaiah, as we saw last week. One of the key themes in Isaiah's prophecy is the promise of a new exodus. The exodus was the defining story for Israel. God had come down, seen the misery of his people, and rescued them through ten mighty plagues. The final plague had brought death on every firstborn child in Egypt, but the Israelites had escaped by offering a lamb. Through this Passover lamb, God's judgment had passed over his people. The Israelites had then passed through the Red Sea to a, new, to a new life with God. In Mount Sinai, they entered into a covenant with God through which he became their God and they became his people. So the Exodus defined who God was. He was their covenant Lord who had redeemed them. And it defined who they were. They were the people formed by God's redemption. Isaiah saw in that story the framework for a new and bigger work of God. Not simply an exodus from human tyranny, but a new, new exodus from sin and death. This promise of a new exodus shaped the way the apostles understood the significance of the death and resurrection of Christ. Let's take just one example, Isaiah 43, verses 16 to 21. This is what the Lord says, thus saith the Lord, in the old, older version. He who made a way through the sea a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again. Extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness. 
and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honour me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland, to, to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Isaiah reminds us that the Lord led his people through the Red Sea as they escaped from Pharaoh and then destroyed the Egyptian army under the waves, Exodus 14. But now God says, in effect, stop looking back to the Exodus from Egypt because I'm going to do something new, something bigger, something better. It's this new Exodus that Jesus, Moses and Elijah discuss on the Mount of Transfiguration. It's bigger because it will encompass all nations, and it's better because it liberates us from sin and judgment. In the first Exodus, God provided streams in the desert to quench the physical thirst of his people, in chapters 15 and 17 of Exodus. And Isaiah says, that water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland, in chapter 43, verse 20, will be, water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland, will be a feature of the new exodus. So it is that, in fulfilment of that promise, Jesus offers to quench our spiritual thirst. John 7 verse 38 and also John 4 verse 13 and 14 says whoever believes in me as scripture has said rivers of living water will flow from within them. The result is that we are a people formed for Jesus that we might proclaim his praise. Isaiah 43 verse 21. If you're a Christian Christ has liberated you from sin rescued you from death, brought you into his people, and made spiritual life bubble up within you through his spirit. How are you going to praise him today? The meditation is from 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And tomorrow's verse is Mark 9 verse 8. And the meditation is John 12, 27 to 33. And we're looking at a, an Australian, the writing is from an Australian theologian called Peter Bolt. And we also hear from another legendary theologian, Thomas Aquinas. So, as always, may God bless you all. Amen.